Uh, this is um, the first webinar in a series about content chain trends. And we, we will talk about um, trends uh, in Create. And I will start this webinar with a very, very short presentation on, on some of the trends uh, uh, we are seeing. And then, of course, I will talk to, to Gary uh, about uh, uh, what he's seeing as well. But let's start having a look at some of the uh, most important drivers of change in Create. Uh, in Create, like in other parts of the content chain media technology, users are striving to do more with less uh, and are resorting to a variety of uh, emerging technology to tools. And I'm sure we will touch upon some of these uh, during uh, uh, our interview as well. Doing more, doing more with less uh, is also important to efficiently deliver content to multiple platforms and uh, shorten the content journey from the camera uh, to the consumer. From a supply side perspective, we continue to see uh, competitive pressures affecting, affecting the creation side of uh, the market uh, with uh, both new entrants and technology commodities digitization forcing uh, uh, suppliers to augment their offerings uh, and or uh, increase uh, their, their scale. Uh, from an user perspective, uh, we think that quality is still very important, particularly if we compare this segment to other parts of the market, uh, where quality has become less important uh, relative to other factors. I wanted to show you some, some IABM data as well. And these are uh, the most important drivers of technology demand uh, in Create from our supply trend survey. Um, as you can see, the transition to IP continues to be at the top of the agenda, uh, followed by remote production and workflow automation. Uh, as you can see, there is a lot of focus on efficiency in the first three drivers. Uh, while the fourth and fifth drivers are more about making uh, all this uh, content uh, produced uh, available to a wide range of platforms uh, and uh, on virtualizing uh, content creation workflows. Now, um, let me introduce uh, you to, um, to our guest. Uh, today we're joined to, uh, by uh, Gary Lardner, CEO of uh, Opus Digita, Digitas. Uh, Thanks, Gary, for being with us today. Hi, Lorenzo. Thank you for inviting me. I'm excited to be here. Hello, everyone. Thank you very much. Uh, for, uh, so just to start, I wanted to, to start with a very general question by asking you a bit about your company. Uh, Gary, uh, what does your company do, very generally? Yeah, so at uh, Opus Digitus, we uh, focus on helping broadcasters and other business entities to quickly and efficiently incorporate user-generated videos uh, into their broadcast and content inventory. Uh, and we are engaging their audience, audience at the same time, which I think is one of the trends that we are seeing in, in the create yeah. category as well. Okay. That's uh, that's interesting. I, I, I wanted to ask you as well, uh, uh, is your solution targeted only to broadcasters or do you serve uh, non-broadcast customers as well? Because we're seeing an increased uh, use of videos, uh, of video in uh, non-broadcast uh, verticals as well. Oh, yeah, yeah, absolutely. I mean, it's while, you know, broadcasters have always uh, led the way with new technologies and new solutions and, uh, have been on the forefront of uh, uh, of adapting new trends or essentially devising new trends uh, with everything that has to do with videos. But today, video is probably um, you know the most efficient form to deliver a message. And delivering a message is not only confined to the broadcasters; it's so confined to almost any business entity. So uh, to answer your question. Uh, you know, we are essentially, our solution, our product can benefit uh, any business that interacts with users <laughs> or, or um, you know, works with, with users, yeah. with, um, uh, you know, with their audience. Um, and, you know, we're essentially helping those entities to engage them. Uh, we're help, helping them to incorporate user-generated videos into their message to be delivered to the same audience. So yeah, I mean it's it's the uh, 
the, the trend is there and the interest continues to grow. Okay, thanks, Gary. And uh, your, uh, as you said, your company um, helps broadcasters leveraging, uh, leverage uh, user-generated videos uh, um, in a quick and efficient way. And do you see your customers and the broadcaster media industry more generally moving to a leaner, more efficient uh, paradigm in uh, content creation? Yeah, absolutely. I mean, there, there's a continuous trend, and as you pointed out in one of your, uh, you know, observations about the industry or one of your uh, insights about the industry, there's a constant uh, drive. There's a constant pressure to essentially do more with less, um, and and that's just the nature of the industry. I mean, the trend continues. We'll probably have the same the same type of discussion next year. So we as a vendors are always looking for for ways to, to help achieve more. Um, <coughs> and it means, you know, reducing cost, automation, uh, employing technologies that are, uh, um, you know, are, are, are more accessible and, and, and more uh, common, um, you know, to, uh, to, to use for broadcasters. So there's a continuous part for that. And, and you know, believe that our solution plays well um, you know, into that particular trend, essentially uh, if, um, optimizing the whole delivery chain from collecting user-generated content all the way to, to, to the audience. Yeah, yeah. And one of the, um, um, the technologies we heard about a lot, especially at NAB 2019, is, uh, is the cloud. And that is helping some media technology users moving to a more efficient and flexible workflows in content creation. How do you see the adoption of the cloud in this part of the content chain, particularly if we compare it to uh, other parts of the content chain, like for example, uh, uh, distribution? Um, it's, um, I, I don't think that there is, you know, there is a uh, separation as far as the trend goes from the, yeah. from the content creation part to, uh, you know, to content preparation, to content distribution. Each one of those components, cloud based a significant uh, part in, in optimization or, or in the future way of delivering things. I mean, it's not the future, it's here, it's here today. It's, uh, um, you know, among many advantages that cloud provides to the broadcasters and, and, uh, and, uh, and media companies is, is accessibility. You know, it's, everyone has access to the cloud. The cloud is where everyone meets and every content, every piece of content essentially has uh, a limitless ability to be, yeah. to be delivered and to be shared and, and to, be, uh, to be distributed in there. Um, content creation is, is no different than that. And, and especially when we are beginning to engage uh, audience and we're begin, beginning to engage users, and uh, this is where accessibility to the cloud plays well into that whole optimization part. And uh, so, you know, um, I've been in that industry for a while, but I, I think that, you know, you've mentioned the recent NAB. Um, it's, it's, it's almost impossible to find a company that essentially doesn't have a form of cloud solution. So that's mm -hmm. to me is, is a complete validation of, of, uh, how important cloud is, um, you know, as part of the whole delivery chain. Yeah, yeah. I certainly saw a lot of that uh, at NAB uh, as well. And you, you talked, it's very interesting. It's, I think it's a very forward-looking view compared to uh, to other people as well. It's interesting because you talk uh, about a, a much more integrated uh, uh, approach uh, to uh, to the content supply chain from so from content creation to uh, to distribution. Um, so, um, Pap, do you see th this? Do you see content creation getting closer to other parts of the content chain? So, for example, uh, production, uh, content management, uh, um, as you as broadcasters and media companies need to distribute uh, uh, content to both traditional and uh, new. Uh, platforms like social media and OTT. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. I mean, it's you know, and thanks for bringing that up. I mean, you know, we've we've uh, sort of um, discussed up to this point, cloud being essentially 
uh, you know, way of way of optimize content sharing. Um, but one of the one of the other drivers within the industry, uh, you know, it's it, part of the optimization, but essentially if a, uh, a, a measurement of time to air, how quickly we can go from raw material to delivering this content to our audience. And it doesn't matter if it happens over linear TV or, or happens uh, over digital distribution, digital first distribution channels. Uh, so, you know, time to air in some particular segments like news is extremely crucial, okay? And, and any, any fraction of a second that is being, uh, you know, reduced from the whole uh, beginning to end chain can significant can uh, uh, translate to significant revenue increase uh, and um, um, and you know competitive advantage versus versus others. So create component being part of this whole production chain has to be um, you know has to be closer, has to be more integrated, has to be uh, faster in order to uh, to play into reducing. Uh, this time to air that is, you know, in, in my mind, that's sort of like one of the main factors that will, um, you know, will, will adapt new technologies if, if that can be proven to do so. Yeah, yeah, that's interesting. But for enabling that, uh, um, you as suppliers and as community of suppliers need to work together as well. Yeah, and, you know, the, the standards are in place and, um, you know, all of the, uh, all of the, uh, uh, thought leaders, industry leaders, um, the ones that essentially create big components for <clears throat> that play um, play a big part in the production chain. <clears throat> Excuse me. Uh, they are publishing interfaces and they are um, focusing on um, opening those interfaces and and making it easy for other um, technology providers, other solution providers to integrate, making them a stronger foothold in the whole chain and at the same time you know uh, providing a more effective solution to their customers or to our mutual customers yeah yeah and as a result of this do you see any of your customers uh, building especially in context still talking about content creation building uh, some solutions by themselves as well uh, it's uh you know, it's it's a it's a constant um, uh, sort of judgment, or it's a constant uh, constant evaluation between building the solutions um, yourself versus adopting something that is that is already fully integrated. And I don't think that there is a single answer to for every single case. Yeah. Um, yeah. You know, are you are you getting one you know kind of like end to end solution, or are you getting best and breed and putting those solutions together. Um, you know, there's argument that can be made for both cases, but I think they ultimately, um, what will make this decision is that the, the, the outcome is going to be uh, more efficient, more robust and, and faster. Yeah. And, and maybe I should start with faster and then, well, maybe robust is first and then faster and then more efficient. So, um, yeah, anyway, I mean, so it's, uh, you know, we're going to continue to see both. So, yeah. you know, as far as the industry goes, there is room in the industry for individual component providers, as well as the end to end solutions, because yeah. if you can sort of separate yourself, uh, as being either best in breed or complete end to end, you'll have space at the, at, at the table to, uh, to compete successfully. Yeah. Certainly, we're seeing uh, both of them as well, and uh, but we're seeing as well, uh, as you briefly mentioned, uh, um, more certainly more collaboration uh, between suppliers and end users in this time of change. Uh, you also mentioned, and I wanted to talk a little bit about this uh, automation, um, and we've also seen uh, a trend towards automation, as uh, I've shown before, in different parts of the content chain, including create. Uh, uh, how can these go? Uh, how far can this go in content creation, from your perspective? Um, it's a um, it's a continuing trend. Um, um, you know, as 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 we 
We continue to innovate and we continue to find ways to automate more and optimize uh, more of, of the processes along the production chain. Um, you know, we will make the process more efficient. So the, the, um, we are not at the end of it for sure. <laughs> you know, yeah. I don't know. I don't know when we're going to reach the uh, sort of the optimal point and say there is no way, there is no, there is no more um, ways to uh, to optimize and uh, and automate. Um, I don't think we'll ever get there. Um, I, I, I think that maybe we are at the pinnacle of of automation because there are a lot of new technologies coming in, and um, there there are more ways to do more processes to do with with computers yep. um, than to do with human beings. Um, and, and, and that's essentially where the majority of the automation, the majority of the optimization coming in. Um, we are, as human beings, we're extremely good at certain things and very bad at others or compared <laughs> to computers. So, um, so you know, there, there are definitely uh, ways uh, for us to, to optimize and automate certain things by replacing manual tasks or replacing yeah. human-driven tasks with automated tasks, and uh, and as we continue to uh, you know to evolve the production chain that contains more and more elements, there will be more and more uh, spots where we can we can optimize and automate. So I think the trend will continue um, and maybe even accelerate. Um, yeah, yeah, and we're we're certainly see. Um, broadcasters very interested uh, in doing more automation because as we said uh, they want to do more uh, with less um, then could, could you expand a little bit on automation please also with regards to your platform uh, if it provides uh, any um, any capabilities for broadcasters and media companies to automate content creation workflows yeah yeah of course i mean it's you know as 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 you mentioned uh doing more with less is one of the trends a faster time to air is another one um and we are trying to take those uh those two trends and uh automate processes that can be done by uh by automation today uh so part of it it has to do with uh content collect uh, collection yeah. Uh, where all of the content is actually is going automatically onto the platform. It gets uh, sorted out by campaigns, by events. I mean, we can present different uh, uh, different views that are based on specific users or specific user groups or specific locations and so forth. So um, it, it helps to help the broadcasters to essentially um, gain access to relevant content quicker. Yeah. Okay, without without spending um, spending much time on it. The other part, I mean, you know, we are employing um, uh, kind of video cataloging technologies that if we are dealing with a lot of content that has been generated from large events, um, and then this video cataloging uh, component or or automation essentially is able to find uh, content of interest and essentially. Yeah. Uh, help the producers to to identify and and quickly curate um, um, those clips or or those uh, pieces of content that are more relevant to to their subject yeah uh, and of course automation as far as as far as publishing i mean we are fully integrated with most of the social media platforms with a single click of a button it can show up on a specific page with a specific uh hashtags and, um, and um, you know, headlines and, and, and so forth. So a lot of those things are being, um, being prepared ahead of time. And then just by a single click of a button, it can go to a variety of social media, um, CMSs, uh, uh, video, video hosting platforms, as well as go directly into the broadcasters, um, you know, content management system. Yeah. Uh, and it's very interesting because um, you, in in this case, um, the the machine or the the automation can augment, but there's still, as you said before, there's still the the human element will involve. So it, it facilitates the the, the content creation 
uh, task. And um, a more specific question, a, a question because I want to talk uh, also about uh, a user-generated video, uh, which is definitely of uh, interest uh, to broadcasters. They try to engage uh, more with uh, younger audiences as well. Uh, one of, of the application you cite is local news. Uh, how does your platform manage to um, check the authenticity, authenticity and relevance of uh, user-generated videos in the fake news era? Yeah, yeah, well, <laughs> um, you know, probably the, the, the well, that's probably the, the, the most relevant question when, when I discuss what we do with uh, Opus Digitus. Because um, I, I, I believe that the, the threat of uh, uh, fake news or, or, or deep fake, fake videos is probably uh, um, the biggest factor uh, preventing adoption of user-generated content by broadcasters. Yeah. Um, and, you know, unfortunately, some of us have been burned by, uh, by um, unauthentic content and you know today with you know we've talked about technology we've talked about the computer capability it's a it's a constant race between um, uh, computer programs that are able to generate videos that look very very realistic and then um, the other programs that are essentially trying to detect if it's real or fake and it's a it's a it's a cat and mouse game. I mean, it's you know it, it depends what point in time uh, who is winning, but it's a constant race that one uh, exceeds the other. So um, recognizing this particular challenge or recognizing this particular uh, uh, threat and the barrier for adapting user generated video, we took a slightly different approach to address it. Um, so, um, you know, to, to assure authenticity of the video, we are um, essentially making sure that the user is at a specific location that has been or, or within a specific perimeter of the location that the broadcaster um, or the uh, event administrator has defined. Um, so we are creating a geofence and only allow videos to be uploaded for, from, from that particular location. We also do a time restriction. So if there is an event that, that took place at a specific time or at a specific hour, we only allow videos to be uploaded from, you know, during that period of time. And the other one is probably, um, you know, uh, even more important is that we do not allow any video editing uh, to occur between the camera and, uh, and the time that the video shows up on um, on the on the Opus Digitus platform, and essentially making sure that only live video from a specific location during the specific time gets uploaded. So that essentially eliminates the majority of the of the issues with uh, fake videos, uh, fake news, uh, deep fakes, so forth. So. Um, we believe that, you know, this particular approach should kind of significantly reduce, if not completely remove the barrier for using, for using of um, usage of user generated content. Um, and um, we believe it, you know, in, in, in the near future, moving forward, we're going to see more and more user generated content being incorporated as part of the regular broadcast, because it will be easier and safer to do so. Yeah, yeah, that, that's very interesting. So you are a bit stricter uh, than the, the digital giants because uh, we've seen uh, um, a, a lot of them investing more, uh, for example, on um, artificial intelligence, but also hiring a lot of content moderators to deal with uh, this fake news uh, uh, problem. Are you looking at uh, AI and ML as well to help with this? So uh, it's um, yeah. I mean, I've been even suggested if I if I add uh, crypto opus digitus to the name, you know, we'll probably increase the valuation of our company ten tenfold. Uh, <laughs> yeah. uh, but uh, you know, uh, taking it seriously uh, with 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 any new technology or any new trend of technologies. Um, you know, it definitely brings an opportunity and definitely yeah. brings, uh, you know, use case, enables use cases that were um, impossible to address before. At the same time, we have to be careful 
about the hype that is being generated around yeah. sort of new trends and new technologies. So I'm not, I'm not going to say that uh, AI and, and machine learning are going to solve all of the challenges that increase that presented in front of us and they're not going to be applicable to every use case that we're dealing with but there is definitely more um, more opportunity for AI and machine learning for um, content understanding or, or content cataloging um, yeah. with, you know, with, with things that if we are sort of looking for specific trends and big data um, and we want to apply those trends, you know, into uh, how we create content or, or what exactly we do with this particular content, how exactly we curate it, um, you know, that, uh, that essentially uh, uh, works at the same time. Um, you know, we kind of like touched upon a little bit about user engagement, but it's... Uh, you know, this is uh, this is one of the things that is definitely coming, and if it's if if it's not already here, because the technology enabled us to essentially to have one one to one session management with with each user and deliver um, user specific content to them, not just commercials, not just advertisement, but also the main content. So with AI, we are essentially take it we can take it one step further and even uh, modify content on the fly for specific users, okay? So it okay. creates, you know, a lot, of, a lot of diversity and a lot of uh, ch changes in content, but can be done on the fly, you know, yeah. kind of like close to real time. Yeah. Um, and, you know, and, and puts, um, puts the, the, the user or the audience in the driver's seat to decide exactly what they want to watch or how they want to watch it or even the the viewing angle i mean where they want to sit at the stadium um you know for the best seat to watch the game yeah yeah <clears throat> interesting so you see ai uh, as having more of a role in, in content creation and also in the creating the consumer experience rather than uh, on spotting and uh regulating uh, fake news. Uh, it's interesting because uh, I didn't know about these, um, uh, the restrictions that, that you apply on, uh, on the content. And it was very interesting to know that as well. Coming back again on user-generated uh, video, do you see uh, broadcasters increasingly interested in it? And uh, do you see um, consumers more engaged as well uh, with uh, when broadcasters uh, uh, use user generated video as well yeah it's uh you know it's 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 one and the same it's sort of like we are um as as broadcasters we're we're looking for for ways to uh to provide more authentic more unique content more engaging content to the users and interestingly enough the users themselves are a excuse me almost a limitless limitless source of this authentic engaging content. We are beginning to see more and more as part of the news segment. There is a, um, there is a segment that incorporates uh, user generated videos, but it's, it's typically um, limited to, to very uh, benign, non-controversial content. So it's yeah. because the, you know, the risk of running into something that might not be fully authentic is high. Yeah. Um, so I, I think that, um, the beauty of the user generated video that it provides kind of like a limitless supply of new authentic content. And at the same time, it's the comfort of interest that can, um, can engage the users because, you know, we as, as users, as audience, we are more drawn to something that is more credible, right? Yeah. We know that it has not been heavily edited to make it look good. Yeah. So there is a, um, you know, authenticity component to it. Yeah. Thank you very much, uh, Gary. Uh, ben, do you have do you have any question from the from the audience? Yep. Yeah, we have. So, got, um, so Gary, there's one here that's for you. Um, does your solution allow users to track the performance of user-generated videos, or does it integrate with such tools? So yeah. So at this point, it, you know, it's probably going back to uh, kind of like um, allowing us to focus on things that we are good at and forming alliances. 
yeah. with other components or other uh, technology providers that this is their, their area of expertise. This is their uh, area of competence. So um, we ourselves, we do not track, we do not focus really on, um, on anything that uh, past the point where the content has been delivered to content management system and custom players and all of this other stuff. Uh, you know, all the analytics part is being done by the distribution part of the chain. Um, but you know, what we are working with, uh, what CMSs that provide that, you know, Brightcop is one of them. We are fully integrated with them. So if you are uh, a Brightcop customer, um, we have one, um, one button push integration with Brightcop, the contents go to them. And then you will gain access to all of the tools that are provided by, by their player to, to track who is watching and for how long and so forth. We do provide kind of like a feedback capability where we can create a dashboard where you can see the data that has been coming back from, from other components into a single place. So that kind of can drive what is the other content that you might be interested in doing. Hope it answers the question. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah, please, man. No, 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 go on, answer. So now no, interesting to, to go back to the collaboration topic and the fact that uh, um, the supplier community that needs to work together and to do uh, the the best that can that, that they can do. Yeah, no, very very interesting to go back to with the question on that yeah. on that topic. So yeah. I think that sort of sort of leads on a little bit. We've got a question here about um, Lorenzo. Do you see any crossover for companies between the different elements of the chain? So do any do you find that a lot of companies or products are sort of straddling multiple elements of it and not just sort of set into one of them? Uh, yeah, we we are certainly uh, we're certainly seeing that, and especially we talked about uh, competitive pressures before, uh, in especially in content cre creation, but also in content production, and we're seeing companies uh, trying to target new segments uh, in the industry, and um, trying to incorporate uh, new new functionalities in the especially the larger companies uh, in the in, in their offerings. Uh, uh, so, for example, uh, um, having both uh, and especially with the cloud, as we said before, having both uh, content creation, uh, production, uh, management, uh, and distribution capabilities. So, we, as I said before, the journey from the camera to uh, the consumer um, with these new solutions uh, is very much shortened. Okay, um, so we've got one last question then um, before we wrap up. Um, Lorenzo, how do you see the content chain as a whole developing and expanding? Is it something that IABM are going to be looking and constantly developing? Will there be a time when we see additional chains, being uh, additional elements being put into the chain, do you think? Uh, yeah, of course. Uh, I mean, um, we constantly uh, monitor what's happening in the market, uh, and we constantly look at different parts on the uh, of the content chain. It's interesting to do these webinars for that as well, uh, so we can learn more uh, from from specific uh, companies. Um, and uh, yeah, we, so we constantly uh, have a look at what's happening in the market to um, update uh, the, the model, uh, the content chain, uh, to make it uh, up to date, uh, relevant, uh, and to uh, to avoid uh, uh, that he, of course, uh, uh, it becomes obsolete. So we, we constantly do that, uh, and we 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 talk with um, with the rest of the the IABM team. Uh, as well to uh, to keep it up to date. 